Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. With your... Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. With your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Vick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Thursday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Elkanin. Dennis Dick with you this morning. Uh, earnings, earnings, earnings is going to be most of the show. We have a couple other headlines, but nothing as big as the uh, the barrage of earnings we got yesterday. Twitter, Facebook. Oh, Facebook makes money. Who knew? Uh, Chipotle, American Airlines, at least 30 others that we that warrant attention that we won't be able to get to. Our guest today is a new guest, Martha Stokes. She will join the show at 835. She is the co-founder and CEO of Technet Trader. She's going to walk us through her service, her trading, and kind of how she approaches the markets. Joel, how are we doing this morning in the S&P futures? All right. I just want to give everyone a heads up here that I'm running the whole show today. So that's why you heard the double introduction. That wasn't because of Spencer. But uh, here we go, folks. Uh, we are in the green. We had a strong close yesterday, trading up seven points at 51.50. Your pre-market highs, 54.75. Not much in there, folks. Uh, above that, we came down hard through it last week uh, or earlier in the week. Crude, let's look at the crude oil futures. Uh, they are embarking on a new high close for the move. That is 68.65. That is where we're trading right now, a penny above that. 68.68 is your current high. High of the move, 69.55. We had another high at 69.38. Gold futures are in the green by two bucks here at uh, 1324.70 and you have silver in the green as well up by nine cents at 1560 bitcoin futures back under nine thousand uh, the futures are trading down two hundred dollars at 8870 and so far four thousand uh, shares of our four thousand contracts have traded so uh let's bring in dennis here uh dennis how are you doing uh big big earnings day and uh, uh how's everything in the after hours and in the i'm in full disaster man disaster here. mode so, yeah What's you're gonna get these and as traders you're going to get these days where stuff just doesn't work out oh, i've been on a roll i think i've made money 19 out of the last 20 days so i was due for one of these days and this is the day where you give back like a couple of those days at least here because um, I got stuck with a couple earning stocks. And of course, you know, when you get stuck with something through an earnings report, it never seems to work out for you. Um, LUV is just a disaster. I've, I've actually sold it here now, but um, I was trying to get it out of last night. I did not want to be in it through the earnings report, but there was no bids and I didn't feel like hitting it a dollar down. So I'm like, wow, you know, cause I don't like giving up an edge and I figure I'm hitting something a dollar down. It means that, you know, basically, you know, you're already giving up a buck. So it would have been the call in hindsight because it's down $2.83 here now. But that's the biggest loser of my day trading portfolio here. But it's just one of those days where it seems like every single stock that I got is not working out. So I have 36 overnight positions and a bunch of them are red. So one of those days, Joel, okay, I'm going to probably all have be limited them. with what I was talking about on the show here today because I'm trying to work out a stock. All right. Well, listen, if you need to bail on us at all here at any time, you let us In know. In all likelihood, that's going to happen. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so here we are, uh, early season. Why don't, why don't we just get the uh, the love report um, out of the way and uh, so you can uh, not think about it anymore. All right, I was queued up for Facebook, but I can do a love right now. Uh, reporting at 6.30 this morning, Southwest Airlines Q1 EPS, 75 cents. That beat by a penny and sales of 4.9 versus $5.01 billion. So uh, more or less an inline report, a slight beat on the EPS, a slight miss on the sales. Not helping me. So I'll just, you know, I've sold it now. It's okay. breaking through technical levels. And, you know, what do you got to do? You know, a lot of people, this is the difference between somebody that's traded for 19 years and, and newbies. You've got to get out of the losers. When they're your losers, you got to do whatever you can to get out. I sold some, 
I was trying to work it as best I could this morning, but there was this really, you know, it was two, it was down a dollar and a heart, heartbeat. It was trading the 52 handle. I try to work out a 52 and a half. I try to work out a 52. I worked out of some at 5160. I worked out of a bunch of the other stuff just right down here at 51. So it doesn't look good. I mean, it could bounce back, but I'm not in, in, in the business for hoping when stocks start, you know, not going my way. Okay. And, you know, the, the report is a disappointment. I've got to get out. All right. Let's just uh, let's just get this over with. Uh, your pre-market low is 50.84. Uh, you bounced up to 51.48 on that. So important level, uh, 50.84. And then let's, let me give you just a little monthly support. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see the psychological $50 level, but if you do, if you sneak under there, uh, $49.76 was your low in September of last year. Where do you want to go? Lead the way. I'm just kind of a side action here this morning. Because, uh, like how I about, said, I'm doing how a lot about of trading. Facebook? That's what the one Spencer wanted to go to first. So let's go to Facebook. Yeah, a lot of numbers here. The EPS is buck sixty nine versus buck thirty five. Sales eleven point nine seven versus eleven point four one billion dollars. They print money. Also announced a nine. I think it was a nine billion dollar buyback. Uh, Q one monthly average users uh, two point two billion daily active users in the last month alone. 1.45 billion the last month is significant because that is when the Cambridge Analytica scandal hit. So uh, people are just flocking to Facebook. They're not deleting it. It's still a beast. Stock just took off. I mean, a lot of people um, thought that they might disappoint. I know Guy Adami on CNBC was saying he thought this was going to go down to 150 uh, because he thought that, you know, that they wouldn't come out with a great report because of all the now, obviously, everybody's looking at them with some scrutiny right now, and they come out and blow the numbers away and talk about data or talk about anything and that it might go down. That wasn't the case. I had no position on Facebook coming in. I couldn't really get a feel for it. And now it's popped, and it's popped big time here. I think anybody who's playing it from the short side is obviously really hurting here this morning. Uh, but, you know, this is bringing up the entire market. And, you know, it's one thing, you know, when I do a lot of index ARB, and you've got to consider when you've got one stock that makes up so much of the queues um, at 6%, up 6%, that's a lot of your move. I mean, the bulk of the rally today is going to be tech stocks. It's going to be FANG. It's going, don't be shocked. Like, you know, I know you look at the S&Ps and you can see the S&Ps are trading up 13 handles. They think everything's going to be higher. There is going to be a lot of stocks that are going to trade in the red here today because the bulk of that gain is tech stocks. Uh, excellent point there. Uh, straight up, if you were short this thing, I know uh, we've had the, the chat's been pretty bearish on this one going into earnings reports, uh, but uh, hopefully no one played it short into the report. Um, if they did, uh, hopefully they quickly covered. Earnings reports are always a coin flip. Uh, you got to 171.77, and now you've uh, backed off to the 170 area. So still not that far off of uh, the pre-market high. Man, did you have a wall at 168 and a half? You had one, two, three, four, five lows there. Uh, so if it pulls back to 168 and a half, I look at that for a little bit of support. Uh, that high at 72, 71, nothing there. If you're looking for some continued upside there, I'll give you a daily high, uh, 173.40. That was your high on March 24, March 21st. And then you got some gaps to fill up in this area. But uh, first things first. Let's take out that pre-market high. There is just stocks that are way up, stocks that are way down today, all driven by earnings. It's either you're up 3 4%, it seems like, or you're down 3 4%. There's not a lot in the middle here. Chad wants to talk AT&T. It's one of your disaster stocks of the day. It is trained down 4% in the pre-market, not taking its lead from Verizon. We know Verizon had a good report. AT&T going in the opposite direction. AT&T now breaking down to new 52-week, or actually, no, not quite, because in October we got down to 32.55, but new lows on the year. Uh, Q1 adjust CPS 85 cents that missed the estimate by two cents. 87 cents was the estimate there. Sales 38 billion versus 39.31 billion. So, not a great report. Sounds like they need that Time Warner merger. Not good at all. If you're trading Time Warner, it's obviously down here to TWX, which I did believe. Did they report earnings here too, Spencer, this oh, morning? Did we get the TWX report? So, might as well talk about it if we I did. Didn't see it. Oh, they did. Wow. Eight o'clock. Uh, I missed it. Uh, Q1 just EPS two dollars twenty eight cents versus a buck seventy four sales eight billion versus seven point nine four billion. So better numbers from Time Warner. 
I mean, this number doesn't really matter. It looks like this merger is probably going through, so it's going to trade off the AT&T price. And I believe the ratio is 1.4, I think. It's a weird, it's a, it was a weird merger. It depended on where the price of AT&T, the average price of AT&T was trading. I thought it was something like 1.4 or 1.47, or I think it's 1.4. So basically AT&T, for every buck it moves, TWX usually moves uh, uh, buck 40. Now, if the merger goes through, there's a discount in there, though, so you got to consider that as well. So it's not a perfect relationship for the risk garbs out there, but AT&T and TWX both trading significantly down this morning. All right. Uh, AT&T straight down here. Uh, you made a pre- pre-market low at 33.52. You're getting a little bounce back up here at 33.80. This is a big breakdown uh, for AT&T here, Dennis. Uh, taking out your April low, your April 20th low was 34.15. Um, let's see what another low. 32.55. I don't think we're going to see that one today. That was your November uh, November 2017 low. I'm sure you can find some daily highs and low in between, but uh, keep your eye on your pre-market low. Dennis, do you have this one or not in your portfolio? I know we talk about it all the time. Uh, very small. It was, it, I had AT&T years ago and then it did that split into four different companies. I got AT&T wireless. I got a bunch, but this is like less than a quarter of a percent of my portfolio. So I almost consider like I don't have it because when they, when they split into the four companies, they gave you a bunch of cash. It gave you this and AT&T wireless and it gave you something else too. I can't even Lucid. remember what it was. Lucid. No, that was years. I got back some Lucid. You're dating yourself there. That's going back in like the 90s. Uh, SBC. <laughs> years fly by on you, Joel. Lucent, and with the spinoff from Lucent, was back in the 90s, I think. Are you sure? Yeah, it was. Because I remember it, I, it, I, it I was, traded it, it was because my dad. I, I, Lucent Technologies in like the year 2000. Remember, Joel, when I was trading up right? I, for one year straight, all I traded was Lucent Technologies. Oh. That's all I was, was an LU trader. And I literally would just make markets on it. I was trying to grab teenies off of it. That was when we traded in the 16th. I was trading it all day long. So I knew Lucent Technologies very well. Um, I was making my living just trading Lucent Technologies. Yeah, my, my dad worked there. He, he, was on, he was in that spinoff. He was at AT&T and then he was at Lucent. Should we, uh, should we break out an old trader story here, uh, Dennis, with uh, no names mentioned uh, from the Bright sure, Office? Sure, do it. Okay. Uh, wasn't that the same time as uh, Nortel Networks? <clears throat> Yeah, that's when they all got hot. Nortel became like it had went up so much it became like thirty percent of the of the Toronto index. And we know Nortel ended up going belly up. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, we had a trader uh, in the office, and Nortel was a high flying stock. Right. Uh, I can't remember how high it was. I don't know. It was either Nortel or Lucent. So I'll, I'll go to. I'll, I'll just say it was, it was uh, Nortel. It, it was, was Nortel. Nortel. And it was trading like 98 bucks and like had a bad down day. It went down to 92 and he traded all day, lost a lot of money and he had a hundred shares of it. And I said, Hey, you know, trader, a, you should probably get rid of that. It's a loser. You had a bad day in it. You know, what's your plan? You know, what are you going to do with it? He goes, I'm holding on this forever. I'm like, I'm like, even if it goes to zero and he goes, yeah. And he watched that hundred shares every single day go down and it eventually took out his account right and he just he i said, don't think it took out his account it's only 100 shares but what are you, he it had just it goes at, to show you he had it at 90 great, it went to zero that? he had it at 90 and it went to zero well that's only nine grand <laughs> i couldn't have taken i was like it's a pretty small account then <laughs> but anyway it, it goes to show you though like imagine if you had a thousand or a couple thousand shares or something like that and i've got a nortel story for you too oh good it's funny and it's funny and and um you know you get some of these you know and, and this was a, a a guy that worked at a brokerage account which probably shouldn't you know be discussing I me mean, he didn't tell names or anything but he said he had one customer that bought like a thousand shares in Nortel like 125 and then it went down a little bit and he's like I'm doubling down he bought like another thousand at 123 it went to zero that customer went all the way down so you can just see it's like 250,000 bucks gone on that one but he was doubling down he's like it's got to come back when it went down two points double down a little bit early average down a little bit early on that one <laughs> yeah. but i mean this happens this stuff happens i mean i've i've taken stocks to zero too in my long-term best portfolio i've taken stocks to zero i mean a lot of us have done it the key is though trading and investing are two different animals like people might look at me and say oh why are you selling you know why are you selling your aluv here this morning it's coming into support at 50 bucks and you know it's bouncing here now maybe i look bad for doing that 
but I'm a trader. I'm not an investor. I'm not going to go into the hope trade and say, oh, I think it's coming back. I wasn't in the business. I didn't want to be in that position, period. I was trying to get out of it last night ahead of the report. And then it disappoints. I'm like, well, street is spoken. It's down. So I've got to try to work out of it as best as I can. A lot of other people will go and say, no, it's going to come back. And then you get into the whole hope trade happening and a, long, and, and a trade becomes an investment. And you don't want that to happen. That's the whole key with surviving is separating it. What is a trade is a trade. What is an investment is an investment. Investments you can hold for a long time, you know, a lot different, especially if you're not a margin. But trading, you're, you know, your trading capital is precious. You can't just be jumping in. And I'm margin to hell on my trading. Obviously, you can't just be holding everything. And you're going to get some bad stocks. And some of those are going to come back. And maybe eight, eight out of the 10 maybe do come back for you. But the one or two that doesn't will destroy your inv- your trading account. So you've got to cut those losers in your trading account. Investing a little different animal. I'd like to see people cut their investing loser investing losers too sometimes. But I'll tell you, in your trading account, you've got to cut your losers. Uh, I've only had, I think, one go to zero. I think that was Kmart. But uh, anyway. Well, I've taken in my investment account, I've taken probably at least, I think, four or five to zero. Like, or, or close to it. Like, I mean, writing it off or like, you know, pennies after it was trading in, you know, dollars, you know, like losing 90, 95% on something like that. I mean, it happens, but you know, I kind of take the Warren Buffett approach you got a hundred positions in your investment portfolio. They're not all going to work out, but you know, I've got some, like I've said before, I'm up like a thousand percent of MasterCard that makes up for a lot of stocks going to zero. So the whole key is in your investment portfolio, you can't just be selling your loot, your winners, you know, and taking 10% gains, 10% gains, 10% gains, and then losing a hundred percent on something that math doesn't add up. If you're gonna willing to lose 100% on something, you've got to make 100% or 200% or 500% on other stocks. And that's why I try to take that really long-term time horizon approach to it. And it's worked for me because uh, it has worked over the long run. Now, when the trading, again, is a completely different animal. And I, I, I have zero tolerance for losers. When I start losing in something, I'm looking for every way to get out of it. All right. Uh, then our educational rant for today, uh, Spencer, we're, I mean, we got a lot of earnings reports. We got uh, about 15 minutes here, 17, 18 minutes before our first guest. Let's just start ripping through some reports. Uh, okay. I'm actually blanking on where I wanted to go. GM. Okay. Let's do GM. Good call. GM uh, Q1 adjusted EPS a buck 43 versus a buck 28. Nice beat there. Sales 36.1 versus 34.6 billion dollars. I think I'm looking over. I think they're on a conference call right now or or uh, oh, Lizzie close is, to so. it. Lizzie is. Um, but anyway, beats on the EPS and uh, beats on the sales. All right, let's take a look at uh, okay report. Yeah, why why do they why are they beating it up so much? Look at that range, Dennis. Well, they do. You- <laughs> it's a funky market. I mean, it's finicky. And I don't know if something they found something they didn't like, but it's like stocks that are out of favor, just out of favor. And if you beat, it's still not good enough anyways. Yeah, I mean, you're holding this. It's been a tough market. I mean, think about how many earnings stocks we've went through. How many have really had significant rallies off of their earnings reports? Well, we- you had Facebook overnight here. So maybe, you know, the worm has turned here a little bit. You had Netflix on its initial report. But really... Let's go in and, and think about this. Who, who else really had a significant rally? I can tell you there's a lot that had significant sell-offs, all the banks. Caterpillar and Lockheed Martin, which had blown it away, had significant sell-offs on great reports. We had you know, IBM report wasn't that bad. It got killed on it. I mean, it's just been a really tough earnings season on stocks. There's just been a lot that have, you know, you've had to basically report perfect earnings to go up. And sometimes that's not even the case. Sometimes you report almost perfect earnings and you still go down. But it's been a tough earnings season. Eventually that's going to turn. And maybe I'm hoping it turned last night, at least for the overall market, because we are seeing stocks on good reports rally overnight here. Hopefully they hold on to those gains. Boeing. Boeing was one. I know you had. Well, Boeing was a disaster. Yeah. Off of its, uh, it, it was a good numbers and it came, well, and it came all the way back down. Well, it wasn't a complete disaster. I mean, it came back up, but it tried to give it all back too. I mean, that was a fantastic report. And yesterday, morning it gave back almost the entire gain before finally catching a bit i mean the twitter report wasn't that bad they murdered it um it, it's a tough earning season all right let's go to uh general motors here and uh you i didn't even give you your pre-market high your pre-market high is up at 39.41 so uh there's a excuse me 48 right near that 39.50 level so if we do go into uh rally mode uh interesting formation on the bottom 
uh, 37 even. Buyers stepped up there in three consecutive brackets, actually three out of four. So I like 37 on the downside here, potential cover short. Let's go to the daily here. And boy, if you're stepping out at 37, just be aware uh, that you have a, a lot of air down to 35.95. I don't think we're going to see that today, but uh, buyers standing here at uh, 37. It's always important on a day like this after a report to go green. That would be 38.11. You got a double top up there uh, from Tuesday and Wednesday at 38.17 and 38.20. Let's do Chipotle next. Uh, let's, let's take a look at those queso earnings. Q1 EPS, two dollars and thirteen cents. Surprising, a buck fifty-eight was the estimate. So they beat that one handedly. Sales one point one versus one point one five billion dollars comparable. Store sales up two two point two percent year over year. Good report. This is Breakout City. It's been wow. consolidating for a while. It's come back a long ways from putting the double bottom down there at 250 earlier in the year. Breaks up through the 350, 385. I mean, you could see 400, 420 is, you know, where it was all kinds of resistance before. I don't think it's seeing those wow. numbers today, but I mean, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere at 385. I don't think coming in here and just fading this one automatically. This, you know, is a pretty good report. And they've been wanting to hear good stuff from Chipotle, and they're hearing it finally. So I'm not fading it, but I'm sitting on my hands. Certainly not, not buying it. No, I'm not chasing. I mean, it's 250 bucks back in January so or February. So here we are two and a half months later. Now it's 380. Uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> I never really got it. I mean, I it always it was given a gift multiple. It was always trading higher than a lot of the other restaurant stocks. And, you know, I we were bearish all the way down. Um, yeah, it got down and, and, and I, I didn't never really, you know, I trade it lots of times, but I've never really had a position in it. Uh, but, you know, it's come back a long way. So, you know, good for Chipotle, good for Ackman if he's still in it. Uh, but I'm still not interested in as an investment in this thing because I don't like the multiple. And I think there's a lot of competition and I still, you know, they had a lot of issues obviously before and I just don't want any piece and, of it just for that reason. Ackman is in it. And I think he's in it from... He's, he's like, like 400 like, or 420. Yeah, four, I want to say around 420. Oh, really? Yeah, did, yeah. He's underwater. He Ackman will be looking to get out <laughs> if it comes back to the 420 area. Looking oh. to cut those losses. All right. I'll just give you all the pre-market high. Uh, that's 388. Uh, decent volume on this. It's just, uh, just going to be hard. If you're a momentum guy, you want to buy this and maybe uh, ride it up to 400. Uh, I could give you that as just a psychological level. Uh, let's go to the monthly, and uh, you can see we haven't traded in the 400 quadrant uh, since July of 2017. You had a high of 419.73. I'll go Dennis, two steak dinners. We don't see 419.73, but he won't take it. Uh, but uh, keep an eye on that pre-market high of 3.88. Jump over here. There's just so many earning stocks here. Um, where do you want to go, Spencer? There's like 200 stocks reported here. Yeah. So let's do uh, Pepsi. Pepsi Q1 adjusted EPS, 96 cents. It's a three cent beat on the estimate sales, uh, 12.5 six for 12.4 billion dollars. So beats on both those numbers. For the Q1, they reaffirmed their outlook for the oh. fiscal year. Also, they said that uh, outside of its North America uh, beverage unit, they generated 4.6% in organic revenue. All this stuff's just massively out of favor. And I mean, there is a number here. And if you want the number, it's the low back in October of 2016. It's 9850. Is there value in something like Pepsi? Sure. But everything's had value here for a while. It seems like value stocks just keep taking it on the chin. Um, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, eventually some of these stocks are going to come back into favor. But so out of favor here, maybe you try at the 98.50 if it gets down to there. It's not a bad report, but it's just a sector and just a stock. Wow, out of boy, favor. this thing. I haven't looked at this in a long time, man. This thing is so just, many stocks just out of favor, Joel. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you're, you know, if you're hanging your hat on uh, the low from yesterday, uh, 10085 and 10097, at least over the last two sessions, uh, you've had a buyer at that level. We'll see how that holds up today. They might be lowering their bids a little bit. Uh, Dennis brought some uh, daily lows into uh, perspective here. I'll bring in a couple other ones. Uh, 10012, uh, that was your low on December 5th. 99.40, and then the big number uh, Dennis mentioned, your December 1st low of 98.50. If we go into rally mode, I'm sure a lot of people would like to see yesterday's high of 102.36. 
All right. Uh, uh, someone asking about for BNY next. We'll do Bristol Meyer. Uh, Q1 just EPS ninety four cents versus eighty five cents. Five point one nine three billion on the sales versus five point two four billion. So a miss on the sales and a beat on the earnings per share. This is finding support at the same area that it found support before, right near fifty dollars. I mean, we didn't quite get down there to fifty. We didn't quite get down there to fifty back in uh, June of, of twenty seventeen either. We got to fifty one, fifty six. It's not coincidental. It's bouncing in the fifty one handles. Just all kinds of support down here. Three percent dividends trade fifteen, sixteen times is value here in Bristol Myers. I'm interested in investing in this one, um, but I got a lot of drugs already in my portfolio, so that's why I probably won't. Just because I got, I can't just keep buying drug stocks, even though I, of this market, I think there's so much value in some of these drug stocks long term right now. Um, I just can't keep loading them up. I got too many already. All right, trading at the highs of the pre-market session or very close to it, uh, fifty-two forty-one. Uh, that is your pre-market high. Uh, let's go to the dailies and boy, did this boy finally broke. Look at this, Dennis. Look at this down streak that it had. Uh, one, two, three, three out of four, four out of five, five out of six, five out of seven, seven of nine. Wow. Eight of 10. Who I bet you it's like 11 to 13 consecutive lows. And then you got a couple uh, nice green days here. Uh, not really nice. 50, 90 to 51, 58 and 51, 76. Uh, I'd like to get it above its stay. It is above 52. I really like the whole 52. Uh, the reason there is that uh, you did have a double top uh, from Tuesday and Wednesday, 198, 187. And then you also have a double close area at uh, 158, 176. But if you're really looking for this thing to run here, you don't, you know, you don't want to see any prints in the uh, in the 52 or uh, below 52. Jump over. Uh, the airlines are a disaster. We did LUV yeah. American Airlines getting hit here too. I mean, all the airline stocks are down. They've been a disaster for a long time. I'm so happy that I don't have any of these in my investment portfolio because they have not been good. They had that nice rally at the end of March where you thought, oh, maybe there's going to be some life here. And since then, it's just been straight down. And we'd already talked LUV. Let's talk AAL. It's the same story. It's breaking down to new lows on the move here. Disappointing report, Spencer details. Yeah, well, that'll happen when you cut, cut your guidance. So as far as the earnings go, the Q1 earnings per share beat 75 cents for 72 cents. Sales, uh, Slight miss 10.4 versus 10.42. Who really cares about that? Two billion dollar buyback plan. Who cares about that? Cutting their guidance is the headline here. They're cutting their fiscal year EPS outlook uh, by 50 cents on, on the low end of the range from 550 to five dollars uh, versus a five dollar 77 cent estimate, setting higher fuel prices. It's not good. So, um, can these things bounce back? Yes, because you are coming to major support 42 to 43. I don't know what it did in the pre market, but in 2017, the lows were 42.67. I'm looking um, at the 2017 summer lows. Yep. 42.67, 40, you know, 42 and a half. Where do we get to pre market? Uh, we haven't quite got there yet. That's exactly, uh, exactly what I, oh, look at what we did. We did bite my tongue, Dennis. Guess what the pre market low is? 42 and a half. 42 and a half. Yep. I should that's set these bits out there at these levels. It sounds it sounds as soon as you get to hit, work, but it does. I bet you get hit. Sometimes you do. Like there's nobody like jumping ahead of your quotes and stuff. Not nearly as much and stuff like this one's got earnings and things are going straight down. It's hard to find buyers. All right. So, so we'll, yeah, I, I, I'm sometimes looking for those bits. <laughs> Apparently an LUV. I almost sold the low. I sold some of 51 there. All right. Uh, getting a bounce uh, off that low. I uh, got a really nice initial bounce over 44. So I'll call 4413. I'll call that minor, minor resistance currently trading at 4350. I like that number on the downside uh, if we do come back into that. Uh, however, if we do uh, breach uh, 42 and a half, Man, you're getting into some ugly territory here. You traded under $40 um, in November of 2016. But uh, first things first, let's take out the pre-market low. And just to stray here a little bit off subject, uh, boy, it's going to be an interesting 10K uh, when uh, Mr. Buffett comes out because uh, KHC, uh, one that we are both investing in, American Airlines has uh, certainly been on suppre under some pressure. I know he's been in the airlines um, IBM, he was lightening up uh, considerably, right? And that's gone down. And then you have uh, Apple, which is uh, backed off. So there could be there could be some plays in here. 
I, I think beforehand, you know, maybe selling it and then, oh, Ward sold out. Ah, you know, then you covered on the buy. But, uh, you know, considering how the markets performed, hasn't been a great quarter. But it uh, should be interesting to see what he did with some of these larger positions. Right. You just never know what he does, though. I mean, he, he for the most part, usually holds. Do you think he's dumping Hines? I mean, been in that for years. I, well, no, he left. Just because he dropped off the board and he, or I, whatever it was? From what I read, it was it was just a, a, a matter of, you know, time and, and just old age and wanting to not, you know, work as much. Can I, can I draw out a really far-fetched theory here? Oh, boy. Uh, not Kraft Hines. Sure. Okay. Well, he, t- he took Hines private, right? Yes. And then he took it republic again with like Kraft Heinz, right? Right. So, you know, if he really thinks there's so much value in this company, could it could he take Kraft Heinz private again? He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's got the money to do that. I don't think he's doing that. Though. I don't I mean, think it's he a is. big company. It sounds like he's, uh, you know, if he's jumping off, he, why would he be jumping off that? If he was going to do that, why would he be jumping off that board seat? Conflict of interest. <laughs> that's true. Know. All right. Uh, uh, maybe I, they I didn't want him, want him to do it. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, move I think on. that's wishful thinking on both of our parts. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I would yeah, love to see that, not, obviously, too. Uh, but yeah. you know, you want to know Heinz's story? Sure. So this was a horrible story. I had Heinz in my invest portfolio from like, 1999 it was one of the first stocks i ever bought because i was a leamington boy born in leamington and heinz um was the, the main you know there was a heinz plant it was them in the pittsburgh leamington and pittsburgh were the two big plants so i had heinz stock from when i was like basically very young one of the first stocks i ever bought and i had it in there for like seven or eight years like a long time and i finally was like you know what this heinz has just not really been a great stock i was up a little bit in it but i was like i'm gonna get out and i sold it in a week later Buffett took a private and it went up like 30%. I was like, are you kidding me? I had it for like eight years. I sold it the week before it went private. And that's just, you know, that's that happens sometimes, but man, that's just bad luck. Bad luck. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's move on to AMD real fast. I uh, like my story. <laughs> no, I, I, I liked it. It was fine. It was a good story. Uh, advanced micro devices, Q1 EPS, 11 cents versus 9 cents, sales 1.65 versus one point. Five seven billion dollars beats on both the top and the bottom for AMD. Uh, I have this in my invest portfolio. It's helping in a bit here this morning, but this story is not pretty either. This has been basically straight down since the bogus CNBC report that they were working with Tesla. And, um, you know, it's had some rallies in there. It actually did have that one rally back at the beginning of January. I sold half of it. I wish I would have sold all of it because it's down here at 1061. I'm in from like 13 bucks. Um, uh, I don't know. This is just one that just doesn't make money. It just doesn't really fit into my portfolio that well. I look at it and I'm glad it's a small position, but um, can it come keep coming back? Yeah, but it seems like every time this thing rallies, there's more sellers. A lot of overhead supply here. I'm not jumping on the AMD train, uh, even though I'm in the stock. Uh, you, it was trying. It was trying to get to that psychological $11 level. Uh, to only got to 1085 and now we're peeling back just holding here at 1060 so i'd have to say you know 1080 to uh 1097 1097 was your march 26 high and then even if you can get over that and get into the 11 handle uh double top 1126 1134 it's a lot of resistance in here i uh, would not like to see it fall back under 1050 uh, based on the daily charts, uh, you'll have a gap to fill down. Maybe if it comes back into the lower tens, maybe you'd be a little bit interested in it, but uh, wouldn't want to chase it. All right, well, let's break a minute early, and we're, we're going to go grab our guest, Martha Stokes. She is the co-founder and CEO of Technitrader. New guest. We'll be right back with Martha.
Welcome back, everyone, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel here with Joel Conan and Dennis Stig on now with a new guest to the show. First time here with us in Pre-Market Prep, Martha Stokes. She is the co-founder and CEO of TechNet Trader. Martha, how are things going today? Uh, they're going very well today. Thank you. You're out in where? Seattle, Washington, that area of the country? Yes, we're uh, yeah, we're in Seattle, Washington, but I have satellite offices all over the U.S. All right, wait. So tell us a little, a little bit first off, and then we'll, we'll get into your trading. But what, explain explain your service. Explain TechnoTrader. TechnoTrader was started 20 years ago to help the retail trader understand the market. Uh, what we saw out there, and a lot of people were coming to us for advice because we were professional traders at that time, running a small fund that they weren't getting the information that they really needed. Retail traders were teaching retail traders. So we started this program to help them understand the market structure. There are now nine market participant groups, dark uh, dark pools, which are the buy side institutions, sell side institutions, corporations are heavy in the market, pro traders, independent traders, retail traders, HFTs. It's complicated. And you need to understand this. Also, there are 42 venues in the U.S. right now, so it's not just the NASDAQ exchange or the New York Stock Exchange or your online broker. So what we give them is the information that they don't have available anywhere on the Internet or in any other program. And this helps those who want to have a professional or career trading stock where they can actually make excellent money every month. Explain your background in the markets. How, how did you come to, to, to be involved in this, in this weird, weird world? <laughs> well, I started my training at the age of 12 uh, with my grandfather, and then uh, I became a CMT, which is a chartered market technician. It is affiliated with the, it's approved by the SEC, FINRA, NASDAQ, and New York Stock Exchange. It represents the Series 86, which is the technical analyst side a series 87 is for those who recommend stocks and if you work with any educational company you need to make sure that they have one of these at least because then they are accredited with the sec which is required by law and a lot of times what happens is people out there are just learning from each other but they're not getting the inside scoop so uh i retired in my late 30s and started doing this because i thought it would be a lot of fun with my partner talked me into it and uh, we thought we'd just do a couple of workshops and then all of a sudden we were in high demand and we were going all over the country uh, helping uh, traders become more like professionals and actually taking it seriously where they could make some real money rather than lose a little money make a little money and it was a hobby it's more geared to people who want to really make an income from the market so now tell us what your your morning market routine is like you wake up, you get to your, you know, your workstation. What exactly are, are you doing there at, at 202 okay. to get your feel for the markets that day? Right. I have everything from brand new beginners who are just learning to trade stocks to professionals who trade uh, 10 to 50 million in assets all over the world. And what I do is I have a market open report, which talks about how the market was, is opening, what's going on on all the different venues, commodities markets, overseas markets, currencies markets, stock market, bond market. I give them information about that because I have somebody in all those different areas. I show them how it's going to open. I pinpoint what the retail side is doing as far as stocks moving ahead of market open, which could be affected by the HFTs. Retail brokers are required now to light All of their orders, even though they fill 99% of their orders themselves to their own inventory, they're required to light them. HFTs can pick up that light. So right now we have Facebook coming out here. We have about 1,500,000 shares uh, trading just before the market opens. And it's going to go much higher than that. So that stock is going to gap. That's the kind of information I give people. Then we look at the professional side. What are the professionals doing? What are the dark pools doing? Uh, do they have their pro traders actively trading short term or are they accumulating, rotating, distributing what's going on in their world, which is entirely different than the retail websites that most people have access to. So I give a countdown. Then I go through the market condition analysis. The market condition analysis tells you how the market, the bias of the market is it sentiment to the downside or the upside because that varies greatly. 
we have uh, uh, have six different market analysis, what I call scans, to scan the market for large lot activity, a large lot activity in bottoming stocks, uh, pro trader activity, HFT activity, retail trader activity, small funds traders activity, so that I can see what's going on and tell them what's going to happen after the market opens, because just the futures alone is no longer enough. It sounds all complicated, but it's actually pretty easy, and I lay it all out for them so that they can be very successful. How do you benefit from knowing what the HFT activity is? Tell us you know, some of these examples of how you're using this information to make more informed trading decisions. HFTs uh, are, are uh, predators. You have, you have manipulators, you have predators, and you have opportunists. And they are predators. What they're doing is they're searching for news feeds or anything that where they can see cluster orders. Retail crowds tend to like to trade together. They like to use their phone apps. They like to see tweets and twits. And so if there's a huge surge of retail interest in something, then the HFTs can front run. Remember, they're trading on the millisecond. So they can trade 60,000 to 90,000 times per minute. Yeah, per minute. And the retail traders are trading on a 60 to 90 second transaction requirement by their broker. Their broker is required to fill in 60 to 90 seconds. So within that time frame, they, there's a lot more activity with the HFTs. What they can do is they can front run. And front running is, yes, there's all these retail orders coming in for Facebook right now. But the HFTs with their larger lots and their more activity will jump ahead of them in the queue. Price, time, quantity. Uh, price is the first factor for queue fulfillment, then time, and then quantity. So if somebody bumps up with quantity and time, oh, they'll push over time and price. So they will be able to get into the queue ahead of your retail traders, which is fine by the retail brokers because then they can raise the price that they uh, set for the fulfillment of those overnight orders or the early morning orders from their retail clients. This is front running. So what happens is that the retail trader gets into the stock at a gap up and immediately, because the pro traders are already in from last night, they moved in, you can see it right on the chart. They moved in last night knowing that Facebook was going to gap this morning. So as soon as it opens, they're gonna start selling against the retail who are gonna be buying at that time. It causes whipsaw trades for retail traders and it's best to avoid it. The thing to do is to learn how to see that this stock is going to gap the next day and get in the day before, not the day of the gap. Uh, just going to the, you know, the advice or the guidance that you give the institutions. Um, I mean, institutions aren't, I mean, they don't get in in the after hours after a report. Institutions hold positions and build positions for weeks and months. So, um, absolutely, yeah. So, is the advice? So, what do you what do you give into like uh, you know, let's say your institution here uh, that uh, you know is bought it high and bought it low here. Uh, what you know, are you giving them technical analysis, a psychological analysis, focusing on the open print? What, what kind of guidance are you giving to the institution versus what you're giving to the retail trader? Okay, I deal mostly with retail traders and professional traders. Uh, the dark pools, the giant uh, pension funds and mutual funds have their own set of analysts and they have whole entire floors of floor traders. I've been on them. Uh, that's something that most people don't realize is that the institution has been granted the right to short-term trade those long-term investments. So they can take and invest in a stock, but they can also borrow that stock out of the mutual fund and trade it short-term and make profit for their company. Uh, uh, what I really deal with are smaller funds. Um, as someone who's managing 10 to 50 million is a small fund. It's not a large fund at all. Uh, and what I'm advising them is what their counterparts the giant institutions are doing and where they're coming in because if you use certain leading indicators and certain price patterns are forming on the stock charts because the dark pools, the giant institutions, buy, as you said, slowly over time. They buy at bargain prices, what they deem are bargain prices. And because of their incremental TWAP orders, they are buying in a bracket. 
And when you buy in a bracket over periods of time in increments of the same amount over an extended period of time, that starts forming on the stock charts that you can identify if you know what you're looking for. Retail traders can also use that for position trading. I'm not talking about positional trading. I'm talking about buying a stock and holding it for anywhere from a few weeks to a few months and then exiting. It's not a so it's, it's Facebook, between. So Facebook trading up this. So you're giving the same advice to the retail, the small institution, a big institution. And, you know, that's that's to sell then, right? Uh, up 12 bucks here. The little guy got in late. The little guy is going to be buying off the open. And you, the, anybody, retail or institution, they just got to they just got to sell into this then. Is that kind of your assessment of Facebook today? What my assessment today is that you should have gotten in yesterday. Oh, okay. All I right, don't Spencer, tell people, you I don't up? recommend stocks. This is, not, I'm not a recommendation service. Okay. My service is analytics. I am not telling people what to buy or sell. And I am certainly not telling the giant institutions what to do. They know what to do. Um, this is a short-term trade transaction. Okay. The pro traders knew about this ahead of time. They were in the stock end of day yesterday. Uh, the HFTs are going to gap it up. And then everybody's going to be selling as the retail orders are filled. I'm just somewhat confused. So you mean the short-term traders, you're saying they knew about this yesterday or the professional traders knew about the report. Are you saying they had the inside information and they're trading on the report ahead of time? Because Facebook gapped up after hours last night, five, six bucks in a sure. hurry. And I'm sure, you know, it wasn't just mm -hmm. professional traders. I'm sure there's a lot of retail traders are buying that gap up as well. After no? hours, not very much activity after hours. If After look, hours on Facebook the, last night? It was up a little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I, I just, million, I just not, think there's a lot of retail traders that probably participated in the rally last night too, if they were quick on it. I mean, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of, obviously brokerage houses that have access to you know after hours i think years ago there was a lot of you know traders that didn't have access to after hours or pre-market trading now but i think most of your brokers offer it now so i just think there's a lot sure. of retail yeah. participation in there too yeah that could be sure yeah absolutely all right we've been on the line with martha stokes you can find her service at technitrader uh is the name of her uh of her service martha stokes.com also you can learn more about her there martha thanks so much for the time today and uh have a good rest of the day you're welcome. All righty, eight forty-eight. We got twelve minutes and way more earnings. Let's go. Let's rattle them off. So Let's get some levels reports, on there. Yeah. No more messing around. We got twelve minutes left here. Let's just start <laughs> ripping through. Them. All right, where do you want to go? So let, let's not mess around. Let's go. Go to, go to some of the big movers here because there's some that are really moving off the, their earnings reports here. Um, uh, where do you want to go? You know, you want to go to Visa? Does that work? Yeah, Visa had a good report. All right, Let's a, go to a buck eleven versus a buck and two cents. Sales five point one versus four point eight one billion dollars. Beats on both there. Good report. Very good report. Stock trading up one twenty four forty eight pre market here right now. I mean, this has major resistance up towards one twenty five. It's like a brick wall up there. Um, financials here look heavy to me today. If you want to say, you know, and, and we look here and see, you're going to say everything's trading up. You know, everything's going to be strong. It's not going to be the case. I'm going to think, I think financials are going to take it a little bit weaker here today. Um, Visa, not a pure bank, but I see the TLT trading higher. Nothing to do with Visa, but I think banks might actually move red here today. I just got a feeling that they're going to go red. They feel heavy to me in the pre-market. And um, Visa is a financial. And I think people are going to fade this pop. So I don't know where it traded the pre-market, but all kinds of resistance at 125. Uh, I think I'm a fader of the Visa pop. Uh, Dennis, one number, one number only. That's what you like. One twenty-five. You could just look Does at that. Your, out yeah, it? look at your last six highs, and it's got to be something. In the yeah, book. it's got to be book. something in the book here. I and, read this inside information of the book and see what's in there. <laughs> because you can subscribe to this for sixty bucks a month. One twenty-five <laughs> has only twenty thousand shares early yet, though, so it might be a little bit more. One twenty-four and a half has eleven thousand. That's nothing really. I mean, it hasn't traded a ton of volume, but it's traded enough that it can go through there if it wants to. I just think I look at that level. Like, look at it, February, March, I April. I mean, it's like almost perfect at 125. Um, you know, you got through 125, 44, 125. You got to give yourself some wiggle room always, but you can round it around 125. That looks like major resistance to me. 
Yeah, we're there. We're agreement on that one. Domino's Pizza, the day deliver good earnings. Domino's, yeah, good pun. Always, always good. Look at Domino's stock is a beast. Oh Woo. my gosh, two dollars EPS versus a buck seventy seven sales. Uh, seven hundred eighty five million versus uh six hundred and ninety one million dollars. So yeah, this thing will it ever stop going higher? I don't know. It Jump appears, over it, it to um, DPZ, 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 DPZ. Yeah, no, I, well, give, give me your technicals here. Quick. I mean, double top at 252 uh, in the pre-market. Uh, we backed off ooh, four points off that. So I think even sellers will be congregating at 250. If you get the pre-market high, uh, that's even better. Uh, what was the former all time high? The former all time high here was made. Oh, this is blowing things away. 243.81. Uh, that was your high from the 23rd. If it pulls back to there, that will be support. Unbelievable, though, that the stock has come back again. You know, you looked in October, got down to 166, and you thought the story might be over, and then boom, it's back again. I mean, this stock has been one of the best restaurant stocks probably in the last decade here. Ten years ago, it was like 25 bucks. Now it's 233. It's up a thousand percent in the last eight years, actually. Unbelievable performer. I don't know. I'm not fighting the trend on this one either. Uh, jump over to UPS. They reported earnings here this morning. Stock got an initial pop on there. And now it's kind of giving it back a bit here. Starting to fade. All kinds of resistance. 110 to 111 on this too. I mean, you got to look at the charts a little bit. When there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven highs in the same area, don't buy in that area. <laughs> what, what's the high here pre-market? Ah, uh, boom, boom. You just had a quick spike up here to... One ten and a quarter. Boy, it hit that. It hit that. It hit Same that. Area. It hit that. Yeah. So now trading down at one oh eight. Let me go to the daily. Hmm. Just not a pretty looking chart here. Uh, double bottom at one oh seven thirty. One oh seven forty one. If you're looking to buy this thing on support, Spencer, did you want to hop in here? Well, I, I was going to read the number on UPS. Oh. Uh, just a buck in line. EPS a buck fifty five, and sales was a slight beat. Seventeen versus sixteen and a half billion. All right, let's go with uh, let's just go with Spinner here. He's uh, rattled off some good earnings. Uh, let's go sure. with uh, PayPal. All right, I actually didn't even see that report. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot That's they were, forgot they reported PayPal uh, yesterday. Uh, Fifty-seven cent EPS versus a fifty-four cent estimate sales of three point six nine versus three point five nine billion dollars. So beats on the EPS and sales for the Q one as far as the Q two guidance. EPS guidance in line sales guidance. Higher than the estimate of fiscal year EPS guidance, higher fiscal year sales guidance in line. It's a good report. It's in the middle of nowhere for me at 77. At 80, I see all kinds of resistance yep. up there. So I don't know how high it got. Again, I wasn't watching it after hours. So many stocks to try to watch after hours. Um, but I would say anything near 80, you got major sellers up there. 77, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Dennis, your pre-market high is 78.48, or excuse Not me, right yep, 78.48, so let's call 78.50 resistance. Uh, let's go to the daily chart. Mm, I think you might have some overhead supply here. Two bad days going into the report, and maybe people stuck on this one. Uh, if you want something above, above that pre-market high, whew, 79.40, 79.45. There's a double top there from Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's do MO Altria. And this was a stock I have written on my sheet, sell any pop. I don't know <laughs> if we got that or not. It's written right. It's circled on my sheet. It's showing my sheet there. It says sell pop in MO if it pops. I don't think it did, though. All right, 95, 95 cents, 92 cents is the estimate. Sales 4.67 billion versus 4.63 billion. So beats on the top and beats on the bottom for the Q1. The fiscal year EPS guidance coming in in line. I don't see a pop in the chart here, Joel, and it doesn't look like it got it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, what's the? I'd be curious. What's the? It's probably pretty wide in this, like what, 55, 57 or something like that. Is no, it? no, no. Most of most thicker. It's a thicker stuff. Fifty-five, eighty offer right now. So it wants to okay. go down. Uh, I mean, this stocks are so massively out of favor here, and people are going to say, "Oh, there's value." And yes, there is. But wait for the stock to turn, or at least wait for a couple updates or something, because these things just keep wanting to get weaker. Now you can look at you know food stocks and stuff, but smoking. I just don't know if there's a long term, you know, people know, you know, there's so much working against the smoking industry. And even saying, you know, the pots, you know, with legalizing pot everywhere, it can't be great for these companies either. I mean, I just think there's a trend for people to be smoking less. They know how bad it is for them. 
Um, there's a lot of people who's still going to smoke out there. I just think there's a lot of people who are quitting. I look at like a lot of my friends and maybe I'm at that age group where people start caring about their health, but I have a lot of friends who smoked and hardly any of them do now. So I just think the trend is not your friend here with, you know, consuming products that kill you. Uh, I guess people aren't smoking and they're not eating. They're watching Netflix and buying stuff, uh, non-food items on Amazon. I guess (laughs) maybe what's going on here. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys uh, one number, and I'm going to call this uh, 54. Uh, you had a couple lows, uh, 5383, I believe, and 5405. So go to the daily here. Uh, better place to uh, cover short than uh, try along here. Uh, certainly not looking good on the charts. Should we go to Advi next? Does that work? I've got that one in my invest portfolio. So actually, my invest portfolio is doing okay today. But make up for all your losses. <laughs> it's my trading portfolio that's getting the hell kicked out of it. <laughs> a buck eighty-seven versus a buck seventy-nine. Seven point nine three billion sales versus uh, seven point six billion. So they uh, had a very strong Q1. They're also raising their guidance. Uh, this is for the this is the uh, fiscal year EPS guidance uh, from uh, $7.30 on the low end to $7.66. Owning my invest portfolio, going to stick with it. Um, you know, I've, I got right in from the IPO. I had it from Abbott Labs and the spinoff, sticking with it. Last earnings report, they blew it away. Stock went up. You can see the spike up to 125 That was a blow-off top called upside capitulation where everybody wanted to get in. And that was a top, actually. I wish I would have sold it, obviously, back then, hindsight 2020. Uh, it's come down significantly here. You've got a little bit of a wall here at 95 Let's see what it does there first. If it can get through 95 it does open up a little bit there. Uh-huh. But trend is still not your friend here. You do get this outside move here. It is a good report here, but I think there's some overhead supply issues, and that's why I'm not chasing this one. And I want to see what it does in 95. Uh, yeah, well, 96. Long-term sticking with you it. Def- you definitely would have sold it at 96. That's where the initial pop was. And now you've come back under 95, trading 94, 85. And uh, actually, the high your last bracket was right there at 95 even. So that's a good number. If you strictly just want to go based on uh, the daily charts here, if you're looking for uh, resistance, uh, you could you could find some highs here. Uh, even like 94 and a half, there's an old double top there. So if in fact it doesn't even hold 94 and a half, look out. You got that got down to 92.28 to fill the gap. Hershey, Spinner talking. They reported earnings. Give us the numbers and I'll tie the details. A buck 41 adjusted EPS. Uh, penny beat on that sales 1.972 versus 1.94 billion dollars. So a slight beat on both of those numbers for Q1. Fiscal year EPS coming in in line. Hated industry. It's offered down here. You can say, oh, if we went with our old theory, you know, that stocks are going down and looking ugly into, and this was last earnings season. It hasn't been the theme this earnings season, so themes changed. But stocks are looking ugly, don't have to do much. Food stocks have to do a lot because they're just so hated. And I just don't see any reason. You know, the Coke report, and it's not a food stock, it's a beverage company, but the Coke report was pretty good. It was trading up pre-market and they turned around and killed it. I don't want to buy any food stocks right now. I have one in my portfolio of the Kraft Heinz. I wish I didn't have it in there. Uh, just more pain ahead, I think, for all these stocks. Eventually, they will turn. Eventually, they will be defensive again. Eventually, some of these companies are going to be good buys. So I guess if you're thinking long, long term, maybe you're okay. But short term, fader of pops in any of these stocks. Uh, 92, that was a level that it was clinging to. Uh, three out of your last four lows, right mm-hmm. around 92, below it, trading below that in the pre-market. So for any chance of a rally, you need to get above uh, 92 you're going uh, historical here. You haven't been under ninety dollars. Actually, ninety-two was your low at Ju- June of two thousand sixteen. You can look at the psychological lo- uh, level at ninety. Uh, but eighty-nine seventeen, if you really want to hold out, that was your March low of two thousand sixteen. All right. Quick Nine thoughts of- on today. I just want to sum up the day. Sure, it's, go ahead. It's a day where a lot of stocks are trading in the green in the pre-market, but it's a day where you're going to see a lot of stocks go red. And you're going to be shocked saying, but it's just back to the index arb. And there's so much of you know your S&P gain here this morning. 
is made up of Facebook and the tech stocks. I mean, Fang is a, you know, a monster here today. Amazon's up 32 bucks. Netflix is trading up uh, five bucks in the pre-market. Google here, which got killed, is trading up 12 points. And Facebook, obviously your leader here, up 8%, up $12. So much of your gain is going to be tech stocks that it's going to be other stocks. That money is going to flow out of financials. I'm concerned about here this morning as one, because the TLT is trading higher, I think there's going to be some money potentially coming out of those sectors. Um, AT&T and Verizon, you know, AT&T is already getting killed on the reports. Some of these food stocks probably not going to catch a bit here either this morning. At least they don't appear to be early. So tech stocks looking strong, at least off the open. Some other sectors are going to be surprisingly weak to some people, but that's, I think, what's going to happen. All right. Uh, S&P's uh, three ticks off the high of the pre-market session, 54.75. I wish I could give you some resistance after that, folks, but um, my level say there's not a lot in there. That doesn't mean they're not going to be sellers considering we traded 26.11 and a quarter yesterday. Uh, double close up at uh, 26.71, 26.71 uh, and a half. Uh, so that's an area to keep an eye on. And just real quick, Spencer, before you wrap, uh, one of our loyal listeners here, TT Mac, is asking about a daily on X. And let's see here. It's trading up 30 cents in the pre-market. I don't know if there's any news on this. I think they're scheduled to report after the bell, but let me confirm they that. They are. Let they're me... scheduled after the bell. Okay. Yep. okay. Uh, boy, if it gets in, you know, if you don't want to hold it into the report and you get up near 38, uh, you had a high at 38.22, also a little spike high to 38.35. So if, if you're looking to lighten up, it gets in the 38 handle. That's where the resistance been. Uh, trading up only 30 cents, so you don't want to see it go red right on the session. Yesterday's low, real down, way down at 35.74. Okay, Spencer. Uh, Joel, you, you did a good job today. Yeah. You, you did good running the show. I'm going to be out tomorrow, so you're going to have the reins all by yourself, and you won't have me in your ear. Um, Holding but, me. Yeah. Uh, on tomorrow's show, though, we are joined by Harlan Pyan, so uh, get ready for some buy-in because we got some. We got Harlan Pyan. I I spent it's a, not, uh, no. There's not going to be any lion with Harlan. All right, Pyan. All right, okay. There okay. may be some crime. All right. All right. All right. All right. The, 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 <laughs> Don't the, get me into all the, 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 the one. We love Harlan. I, Harlan, I, you were awesome. I, I, I shouldn't have love circus in town. We took his line. I shouldn't. Right. I shouldn't have started with that. All right. That's our know, that's our show for the day, folks. Hope you all have a good rest of your day. We will see you, folks, on Friday. Have a good one.